Welcome to my quick start guide to automation in Ableton Live Lite. Freebie. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Today's patron shout-out goes to Genia Varava. Thank you so much for the support. Let's get started. Just a quick disclaimer here, I am by no means an Ableton Live expert, nor is this video intended for Ableton Live experts. Uh, it's simply meant to be a quick step-by-step, -step, almost beginner's guide to automation, uh, just explaining what it is and how to do it just to get you started with the basics so you can get off and running making your own music. That's it. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, yeah, let's get going. So automation in terms of Ableton Live refers to taking any parameter from an instrument or a plugin or an effect or whatever and automating it over the course of your track. It's a very powerful way to bring your music to life. For the purposes of this quick start guide, I'm going to be using Ableton Live 10 Lite. However, automation is pretty similar across all modern versions of Ableton. So here I am in a blank project here, an empty live set. I've got a drum kit on track one and a bass on track two. The first thing I'm going to do is tab over to arrangement view because that's the easiest way to look at how automation works. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little drum loop and a bass line so we actually have some music to automate. So at this point, I would like you to do the same, make a little loop for yourself however you see fit. All right, so here's my drum loop. And here it is with the bass line I just made. I just have those playing for 16 measures and then looping. So now that you've got some instruments playing, let's automate them. So to do that, go ahead and press A on your computer's keyboard. This takes us to the automation mode. You'll notice right away that we have this red line across our first track here, across our drum track. This is our automation lane, and we use this to dictate the automation, how much, and where it takes place. But before we do that, we need to come check out these drop-down menus here. So this first drop-down menu is going to be the device that we're automating. So you can see we've got Session Dry Kit here, and then we also have a device for each individual piece of the drum kit. That's a bit excessive for the purposes of this video. We also down here have the Mixer button. So let's go ahead and select Mixer. Now the second drop-down menu is where we select the parameter of the device that we want to automate. So in this case, we have speaker on, track panning, track volume, crossfade assign, and then our two uh, send effects, in this case, reverb and delay. So let's go ahead and select track volume. Now if we come to this red line here and hover our mouse over it, we'll see it says 0.0, .0 decibels. That's the current volume of the track. It aligns with the track volume right over here on the mixer. So you'll see that our mouse uh, snaps to the grid with this little blue dot. We can actually click on the track here at whatever point we want and leave a blue dot. Now those little blue dots we can grab and move around to automate the volume. So for instance, right here, I've got a dot at measure one, a dot at measure three, and a dot at measure five. So if I take the dot at measure three and move it down, you'll notice this nice smooth red line. At measure one, our track volume is going to be 0.0, .0 decibels. At measure three, it's going to drop to negative 24, and then by the time it gets to measure five, it's gonna be back up to where we started. So let's listen to this volume automation here. Remember, we're only automating the drums right now. Surely you were able to hear the drums start loud, get quiet, and then go back to loud again. It's really that simple. So let's go ahead and automate something on our bass line here on this nice Juno bass. So if we go down to the first drop down menu, we get to choose, of course, the device that we want to uh, automate. We have Juno bass or mixer. So this time let's select Juno bass rather than mixer. That means that we're going to be automating these parameters down here, which we can select via the second drop down menu. So let's automate the filter cutoff. Now, there is a second automation mode other than the drop a point on the line and drag it to where you want it. It's called draw mode, and the way we turn that on or off is by pressing the B key 
on our computer's keyboard. Now our cursor becomes a pencil and we can simply click and hold and draw in our automation throughout the course of our track. By the way, I'm undoing the automation just by holding control and pressing Z, just classic Windows undo. If you want to fine tune the automation a little better, you can actually hold Alt. And now as you can see, it's much less steppy and a lot more natural. So let's automate the filter cutoff here, which is what we have selected. So I'm gonna start down here in draw mode at basically nothing. And then I'm just going to slowly draw it up. So now throughout the course of the first three measures, the filter is going to continually open. Now this is going to sound kind of steppy, but that's okay. This is just for the purposes of demonstration. Let's listen. <laughs> Surely you can hear the filter opening up as time goes on. And that's it. That's as simple as automation is. And like I said in the beginning, you can automate things like plugins and effects. So let me get one of my favorite plugins here, uh, Polyverse Music's Wider. This is a stereo uh, width plugin that I really like. Uh, I'm going to leave it at zero here. But now if I go to the drum track, you'll notice that if I use the device selector, I can actually now select wider as the device that I would like to automate. Now, the only parameters that I have to work with are is the plugin on or off, which is device on, or the amount. So let's go ahead and automate the amount. So now I want to turn off draw mode, so I'm gonna press B. Right now the amount is at 0%, so I'm gonna put a point right here, and then I'm also going to put a point at measure five, and I'm going to drag that all the way up to 200% wider. So we're gonna start at 0% by the time we get to measure five. As long as you're listening in stereo, you're gonna hear the drum start in the exact center. By the time we get to uh, measure five, they are going to be uh, spread incredibly wide. So let's listen. And of course, we still have the volume modulation on the mixer as well. So yeah, that's how automation works. It's pretty handy. It's pretty easy to use, I think. Pretty simple. I was really intimidated by it at first, but uh, I just really couldn't find any cut and dry tutorials that didn't have a bunch of extra stuff in them. So uh, yeah, I decided to uh, make one once I kind of figured it out. So I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on it. If not, you can always leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings, just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. Thank you so very much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.